Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. I'm David Ward. Welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this scene that we're looking at now. Uh, just a nice little environment here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here's the basic scene in Blender. Um, you know, just a default cube and everything, the light setup and all that. I've kind of rearranged the, the uh, user interface a little bit to suit my needs. You can do the same thing, you know, just uh, click on the edge where you're there where you're mouse cursor turns into the double arrows, you right click split areas to make another line or you do it again and join areas, same same deal. Anyways, that's not what I want to go over. What I'll go over, what I want to go over is, is making a terrain and some trees and things like that. So let's get started. First off I want to delete this cube. So just delete it. There we go. And I want to add a plane. So I'm going to go into top view by hitting seven on my numpad. Spacebar add mesh plane. And it's really small, so I want to make it a lot bigger. Pop back in the top view since I rotated it. Hit tab to go into edit mode, and we're going to subdivide it multi, multi, so that so it means we can do multiple subdivisions at once. Number of cuts, we're going to make it way high. Let's do. I'm just clicking forward. Uh, we can just type in. Let's do 20. Okay, and it's going to take my computer a second to. Uh, no, okay, I must not have hit okay fully. Okay, uh, now let's scale it up. Hit S. Just drag your mouse. And now let's scale it on the x-axis here. We want a kind of a, a rectangle because, you know, that's kind of how we're going to see it. Okay, so now we've got all these rectangles inside here. So, I don't want rectangles, I want squares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my edge select mode. Hold down Alt uh, and Shift. And I'm going to select all these vertical lines just click on them like so and it deselects them oops wrong one okay so just do that on all of these guys because what we're going to do is subdivide and do control Z uh, subdivide these one more time just normal subdivide and uh, you see it, it cut all those again so now we have squares instead of rectangles awesome okay tap back out of edit mode Let's raise this up a little bit, and we're going to do some sculpting now, but first I want to set up a texture to sculpt with, and you do that by going right here to the shading, and we're going to go to the material button, and add a new one, and just use your middle mouse button to drag that over, just line it up a little better. Click on the texture button now, add new, and I want to add a uh, uh, clouds, and I'm going to go to colors color band and raise this A up here that's alpha and default selection there is black so raise the alpha all the way up to one and I'm going to grab the one on the right here the the uh, aquamarine color here and make it white and I'm going to raise the contrast at C-O-N-T-R that's the contrast up some and that'll work and let's go back to the texture there and let's name this brush one or just brush, probably fine. Just yeah, just name it brush because that's that's the only one we're going to use. We're not going to make any more. So, anyways, uh, okay, let's pop into sculpt mode and go back to the editing buttons, and we're going to add a multi res and add a level, and let's add a few more levels. Depending on the strength of your computer, is kind of depends on how many levels you can add of multi res. Excuse me. Also, if you're if you're using this technique for another model. You want to make sure if you have subsurf turned on, you want to make sure it's turned off because it'll really bog down your machine when you don't really need it because uh, we're going to be sculpting and that bogs down your machine enough as it is. Okay, so top view, go to the sculpt draws, right? Default settings are typically fine. Let's go to texture right here and click on that first empty box and we're going to add a new one. Actually, and then click that and we'll go brush. So now our brush that we're drawing with is going to have that cloud look to it. See? How cool is that? So now you can add some pretty neat looking uh, uh, textures to your to your your plane here by using this brush. So let's increase the strength up and let's just draw randomly on here. Kind of just a nice gritty texture 
Okay, so we got a nice rough texture on there. Let's go ahead and slow it down, kind of get some a little bit of randomness to it. You know what? I might want to put I might put a tree right here. So let's raise that ground up right there where that tree's going to go. Give it some extra roughness right there, you know, where the roots and things like that are going to be coming out. Okay. Now, we we'll go back into flat view and see, ah, it didn't raise it up very much. So, let's do this. Go back to your texture and just go back to default and sculpt. Let's raise the size of that guy up really big. And now when we draw on it, it's going to raise it up a lot better. So, you can add little little hills. There you go. Let's raise that tree area up there. Okay. Now, let's add some little little shallow spots. Let's go to sub. What we did before is adding and it raised it up. So sub is going to lower it down where we where we draw. So my brush is a little big right now. Let's make it a little smaller. About half the size, I think it was about one one twelve. Let's put it down to about we'll say fifty. A little less than half, but that's fine. And let's just draw in here. Maybe little indentations where the the roots are. You can also use the texture for this if you like. Give it that extra bit of roughness in there. there you go. Let's go back to the default here. There it is. Okay. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, we'll call that good on the on that uh, on the tech on the sculpting. Now let's go back to object mode. And now what I want to do is is turn this sculpt into a, a, a tangent normal map because this many polygons, if you see if you go in a tab view, look at all those polygons. That's great if you've got a powerful computer, but if you don't, it's going to take a long time to render because it has to calculate all those. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and Right here in, in the multi-res uh, rollout, you can bump down the levels way down to where you don't see all that detail. So I'm going to shift D. Actually, before I do that, let's go into tab. And we can see all those polygons are gone now because I turned the multi-res way down. So now I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to click on the edge here. Click on that edge. Excuse me, right click on the edge. You don't want to left click. OK. And I'm going to control E. And I'm going to mark a seam. So we can unwrap this in our image editor. So let's do that real quick. Put this screen up to UV image editor. And now, over here on this window, let's go to texture paint. And now pop into edit mode. For some reason, you have to go to texture paint first to be able to unwrap them. But uh, that's how you do that. Then you just go over here and you hit UV unwrap. Oh, and hit A to select all of them. You've got to select them all. First, and then I'm right. There you go. Now I can see where our texture map's going to go. So I just hit A, grabbed all of those. I'm going to hit G and Y so I can raise it up on the Y axis and not in the X axis. See, that way I don't get it off of the off the the board there because I want it to stay right where it is. Okay. So now I'm going to go Image New, and let's turn on UV Test Grid, and let's turn this up. Uh, since it's going to be a, a nice texture map, let's make it 2,000 by 2000 and we'll say okay and now it really stretched it out so I'm gonna go UV unwrap it again did I put in the wrong numbers I must have let's go ahead and kill that guy let's make a new one image new yeah 200 yeah that's why 2000 is what we need there we go now we go unwrap I hit unpin by accident that's no big deal though, because we're not using pinning right now. Okay, now G, Y, and raise it up there. Okay, so now let's name this. We're going to name it uh, Detail. Uh, actually, let's delete that. Let's name it uh, Terrain underscore Normal Map. Map. There we go. Okay, and we will save this in just a folder. Uh, you can choose whatever folder you like. I like to keep mine on my external drive. 
And I'll go ahead and make a new folder here. I guess I could have done this beforehand, but uh, let's call this uh, terrain. Make the directory, yes. And let's name this. What do we call it? Uh, terrain underscore normal map. Save that. All right. Now, let's go back over to this one. Let's go ahead and grab that, click it and drag it with your left mouse button, make it narrower. Go back to edge, uh, object mode. Now we can shift D, duplicate that. So now we've got two of them. So if you grab one of them and move it around, you can see the other one right there below it. So in order to tell the difference between the two, let's, let's rename them. Let's name this one terrain. And we'll click again, and it should select the other one. Yep, plane 001. And let's name that one terrain underscore detail. OK. So on underscore detail, we're going to turn this multi-res back up to 4. So you can see all that detail again. And the, the lower detail one is still underneath, so it's kind of bleeding, bleeding through there. But that's fine. And uh, you can see everything's still fairly squared off. Let's go ahead and set smooth on that. And uh, it kind of takes off some of the detail, doesn't it? But that's okay. We don't want it to look pixelated. So let's go ahead and set that smooth. Okay. Now we go back to the other one, to the normal terrain right there. And uh, set smooth on that one also. Okay. Now we're going to make that, uh, that tangent normal map. Let's go to... No, we don't. We're fine. Go to the scene button right there. And go over right there where it says bake. And we want selected to active. And we want normals. And where it says camera, click there and turn on tangent. OK, so now what you got to do is let's go ahead and make this a little bigger so you can watch it happen. OK, deselect everything. Just hit A on your keyboard. Now select and make sure. Let's hit N on our keyboard so we can see what we have selected up here. So we've got terrain, terrain detail. OK, click again. You just want terrain first. Hold down Shift click again. Now you have them both selected, but you had terrain selected first, which is very important. You want to select the normal the 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 normal non-detailed one first. Okay. Now we're going to hit bake. And it's going to paint that normal map onto here. But it didn't change anything. I think because let's go back to the normal terrain back into yeah, let's go ahead and apply that multi-res. We don't need all that detail or all the multi-res layers hidden on the normal ones. So, okay. Now, terrain, shift, terrain detail. Now, let's go in here. Now, let's bake. Now, you can see all that. How about that? Okay. So, now, go ahead and save this again. Save. And it's going to ask you if you're wanting to save over it. Yes. Okay, now we can get rid of that detail one because it's going to eat up a lot of space in the file and we don't need it anymore. So just delete that. Now to add all this detail back onto this smooth one, go to your shading panel right there and let's go ahead and get rid of that brush since we don't need it anymore. We're going to add a new one and it's going to be the image and we want to click on the arrows here since it should be already loaded in there. We'll just click it. Terrain Normal Map TGA right there. And now, click on normal map right there. Go back into the materials. Map input is going to be UV. And then go to map 2. To turn off color. And click on normal. And you want to make it 1.0. So now, if we go into camera view. And with this, the default camera and light setup, just hit F12. And it renders all that nice little detail on that smooth surface. So that's one way to, to put a lot of detail on something and not have it be outrageous, have an outrageous amount of polygons. Okay, now moving on. Let's go ahead and set up our camera. Go ahead and add it empty and move it up some. Grab the camera, shift, grab the empty, control T, track to constraint. Let's do the same thing with the light. Add an empty, grab the light, shift, control T, track to constraint, and let's turn that light into a spotlight. I like to work with buffered shadows myself. The general, the uh, default settings in uh, a normal scene in Blender uses ray traced shadows, which can be more crisp and sharper, but I personally prefer the 
the buffered shadows because they render faster for one. Okay, so let's set up the buffered shadows. Buffer size, 2000, that's, that's pretty decent. Uh, samples, everything I typically leave alone except for the bias. And I usually make that at least 0.25 because the smaller it is, the there we go. Just type in it. The smaller it is, the better the shadows look. So now if we render, there we go. And if you want to make those little details stand out a little further, just increase the normal. We'll say let's put it up to two. See what it looks like. Did it change anything? I don't know. Let's take a look. Well, it looks about the same. I guess with tangent normal maps, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference how high you put it. It just does it at the one height. Anyways. Okay, so I promised you a tree. Let's make a tree. So, the way you do that, let's put the cursor right there in our little hill that we made for the tree. And uh, hit space. And we're going to add a curve. It's going to be a Bezier curve. It's spelled Bezier, but it's Bezier. It's French. Okay, grab. Uh, actually, you need to change a few things first. Let's see where to go. Go into. Uh, hit Z on your keyboard to go into wireframe view so you can see where you put it, grab it, go to editing, and we want to turn on 3D, turn off front and back, and change the bevel depth, just grab it and roll it up here, let's pop back into a solid view, and you can see it's got four, four edges, I want it to have more than that, so increase the bev resol, which is the bevel resolution, I usually keep it on about four. That's usually okay. Okay, I'm back to solid. Eh, that's uh, frame view is fine for now. But you want to go into editing mode, and you can see as you drag these, if you you got to click on the center dot because the outer dots are just the handlebars of the Bezier curve. Uh, so you click on the center one, and if you drag it around, you can see little arrows coming off of it. That means it starts here and it ends here. So we want the start to be at the bottom, and grab that and move it up. Now let's back into solid view, and let's rotate that around a little bit. And if you hit Alt S, you can make it fatter or skinnier. You can kind of see which way it's facing a little better. So just hit R on your keyboard and rotate that back around. And let's rotate this around and extrude. Just hit E. Those twists look a little weird, so let's try to fix those a little bit. There we go. Just rotate your controls until it looks about the way you want it to. Just move them around. Okay. We won't make a real hugely detailed tree. As you, the further you go up, the more you want to taper it. Remember that's Alt S. Just click on Alt S and drag your mouse and it'll it'll taper it down and then just keep it extruding out make the little branches. Alt S, there we go. And if you just hit regular S, you can scale it down further and it has a sharper curve. So it might make help the branches look a little more realistic. Okay, it has got one branch. How are we gonna make two of them? Well, that's easy. Just click on one of those center points, Shift D to duplicate it, move it up, or move it just slightly away from the other one, and hit E on your keyboard to extrude. And just rotate that around. Scale it down some, maybe. Grab this guy, scale him down. Rotate. And do the same thing you were doing with the other ones. Just hit E and extrude them. Let's taper them down. Rotate that. Scale it down so there's a little bit more sharp curve there. Rotate that. Okay, so you just keep doing that. Let's put another twig right there. Shift D, duplicate that. Extrude up. And grab that. Rotate it around so it's coming out a little easier. And rotate this. Let's go ahead and move it out a little bit. Scale it down. Okay. And let's go ahead and just put one here. Scale that down. And that'll work for now. We won't put a real hugely detailed tree in here. But you can 